Are your students struggling with positive and negative integers? Let's handle that right now. Suppose you do some chores and you earn $3 and now you have $3 in your piggy bank. Now imagine you want to buy a toy but it costs $4. Can you buy it? Yes or no? Absolutely. You can buy it if you borrow one, two, three of your own dollars you're going to spend, but you've got to borrow that last dollar from someone else, don't you? So you owe one dollar, but notice the total span is four. One, two, three, four dollars. So you could buy it, but you're going to owe somebody a dollar. <laughs> and then what happens if you see a cookie and you'd like to buy the cookie, right? And the cookie costs two dollars. Can you buy it? You can if you want to go into debt some more. You could borrow from me. You could borrow two more dollars. So that means you're going to go down even more. So one, two hops for the cookie. All right, so now you don't owe just one dollar. How, how much do you owe? You owe that person three dollars. Now imagine you do some chores and you earn five dollars for chores. Okay, so which way are we going to go now? Well, for $5, we're actually going to put money in our bank. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five hops. So now I'm here. I can pay the $3 I owe. And how much do I have in the bank? I have $2 to my name. And I don't owe anybody any money. What did we just do? OK, so what we're doing here is we are dealing with something called positive and negative integers. Okay, so to do it without a number line, okay, because once we understand the main concepts, we're ready to try this just with numbers. So initially you had three dollars. That was a positive amount. But then you wanted to uh, buy a toy for four dollars. So this is how much is coming into your bank, but this is how much money is leaving your bank account. So imagine this is your piggy bank. <laughs> you put $3 in and then you took $4 out, but you owe $1. So how much is in here? A minus one. So how do you do this without pictures? So what you do is we say three minus four Okay, because it's a difference, whichever number has the sign, that's going to be the sign of the answer. Okay, and then we, uh, we just take the difference between 3 and 4 and we put 1. Before we move on to the next example, I just want to share something with parents who see their child overwhelmed with math but not quite sure what to do about it. So in this video, your child is learning math in a more natural way that fits with how they think. And if this is working for them so far, I'd like to invite you and your kids to join me for a free online class in learning the math the easy way. So to register at no charge, just click on the link below in the description or the comments or simply go to getmath.net slash learn. Okay, let's continue. So which number is larger? The 18 is bigger than the 12, right? So the 18 has the negative sign on it. So I already know my answer is going to be negative because there's more negative than there is positive. And then what we do is if these two signs are different, what we do is we say what's the difference between 18 and 12? Okay, and that's going to be a 6. So my answer is 6. Let's do another one. What is 5 minus 10? Okay, who's bigger, the 5 or the 10? All right, the 10 is bigger. It's got a negative sign, so we write that down. And then notice there's nothing in front of the 5. Okay, if there's nothing, we assume it's a positive. Okay, it, it's implied that it's positive. Okay, so now the difference between 5 and 10 is minus 5. What if we have a 13? Okay. A uh, negative 13 plus a 13. What if they're the same number? Well, that means they cancel out. You owed $13 and you paid them $13. Okay, or you have $13. So this is zero. So on our number line, here's the zero. Okay, so you were in debt, maybe $13. And then you had $13, so now you're back to zero. Imagine you've got a number like 47 plus 2. 
Okay, what is that? So 47 is much bigger than 2, so we know it's negative. The difference between 47 and 2 is 45. Okay, and what if we have a minus 5 plus 1 minus 3? What do we do there? Okay, so because these, uh, these two are the same here, what we're going to do is we're going to combine them. So a 5 and a 3 combine to be a negative 8, and then we also have the plus 1. Okay, the 8 is bigger, so it's negative. The difference between 8 and 1 is 7. Okay, so what if I have a minus 4 minus 3? What do we do there? Notice how the, the signs are the same. Okay, what that means is, is that we were here at minus 3, and now we're going to go to minus 4. We're going to go minus 4 more. The, the number becomes more negative. So the answer is still going to be negative, but it's going to be 4 plus 3, which is a 7. Because this is a 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 hops, which is that 4, to minus 7. Let's try another one. What if I have a minus 2 minus 1? Okay, so on our number line, here's a 0, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay, so this is a minus 2, so we're here, and then it says go even more negative, go further from 0, 1 hop. So that means we have, since both of these are negative, you put down a negative, and then you combine 2 and a 1 to get a minus 3. Okay, so let's refresh. Imagine you've got a positive 7 minus 4, a minus 7 plus 4, and a minus 7 minus 4. Okay, so we have all combinations here. Okay, so how do we do this? So 7 minus 4, you're already familiar with how to do this. You had 7 cookies, I ate 4. You have 3 left. Okay, this one, notice how the sign plus and minus, they're different. You take a look and see which number is larger. It's the 7, and so the negative gets written down because that's with the larger number. And then you take the difference of 7 and 4, which is 3. For this one, you see the signs are the same. That means you just put down whatever sign that is, and then you combine the two. 7 and 4 make 11. Minus 5, minus 3. These are both negative, so put down your negative sign, and then combine 5 and 3 to get 8. This one. We have signs that are opposite from each other. Okay, so this one is bigger than the 3. The 5 is bigger than the 3, so we're going to add, we're going to put a plus sign here, okay, because that's what's in front, and then we take the, dif the difference between a 5 and a 3, which is 2. This one, the signs are different. This time the 5 it has a negative sign on it, and that's the larger number, so we put that down, and then we just take the difference. Are you seeing a pattern? Okay, how about one last bonus problem? If I have an 11 that's negative, plus a 4, minus a 1, minus a 2, what is that? Okay, so minus 1, minus 2, okay, you can probably do this one in your head. So because both of these are negative, that's going to be a negative here, and you're going to combine the 2 and the 1 for a 3, okay? And then take a look at this. I have a, po a positive 4 and a negative 11. The 11 is bigger than the 4, and it's negative, so we're going to put that down, and then take the difference. So that's going to be a minus 7. Minus 7 and a minus 3, both of those are the same sign, so it's going to be a minus, and then you combine the 7 and the 3 for a 10. If your child is overwhelmed or frustrated with their math lessons, I think I can help. I teach math to kids in a way that flows naturally with how they learn, so they find it way easier and even have fun with it. If your kids have been struggling with their math lessons before, I'd like to invite you and your kids to join me for an online math class in Learning Math the Easy Way. To register at no charge, simply go to getmath.net slash learn. You'll find the link in the description as well as in the comments. Thanks so much for being part of my class.